As you may know, the Kepler mission surveyed a lot of stars, possibly over 150,000 of them, and looking for transits from potential exoplanets. In 2015, astronomers saw that Kepler had noticed potential transits from a tiny, dim red dwarf of just magnitude 16.8, located nearly 1,000 light years away in Cygnus, known as KIC 1040-3228. It was then given the designation KOI 8007. One of the transits observed was very long, and it took whatever causing it two days to cross the surface of the small star. It must not have been the already detected candidate planet orbiting the star every two months. Only one such long transit was observed, and its edges were noticeably smooth for a planetary transit of such depths, resembling more like a V-shape than a U-shape as is commonly observed from transiting planets. In 2015, a group of scientists from the University of Tokyo analyzed the transits of 89 long-period Kepler planets in hopes of finding signatures of planetary rings. Most light curves had too much noise to tease out any possible ring. Out of the 11 planetary transits left, KOI 8007's long transit was the only compelling signature of a ringed long-period exoplanet. Analysis of this very long transit reveals that the potential planet, dubbed KOI 8007.02, is extremely far from its parent star. It's estimated that the planet may take around 450 years to orbit its parent red dwarf star. This would place it further from the star than Neptune is from the Sun. However, this period may not be accurate. Since we only observed one transit, we cannot really find out the true orbital period exactly. The method the astronomers used to derive the period uses parameters of the star which cannot be determined from simply observing the star, such as its density. So for example, if it were a red giant and its density were much lower, which is unlikely, but still possible, then the orbit would be very different. It's also possible that the orbit is eccentric and the velocity of the planet varies throughout its orbit. And it's possible that the recorded transit occurred when the planet is close to its apoapsis, or the point where it's furthest from its host star, which is near its slowest velocity. This would of course also change the orbit of the planet. There are two possible solutions for a Saturn-like planet with a ring. One invokes a smaller Saturn-sized planet with an inclined ring which blocks out much more light. The other, slightly more likely solution involves a much larger planet, about 40% larger than Jupiter, with a more edge-on ring which blocks out less light. This is a tantalizing possibility. However, there are two other possibilities for explaining this transit. A very long period eclipsing binary, or even a binary planet orbiting the star. The V-shape of this transit is typical of that of an eclipsing binary, so it's possible that KOI 8007 is a long period eclipsing binary. Modeling suggests this possibility is about as likely as the ring's planet one. Now onto the binary planet hypothesis. The orbital motion of the binary would account for the very long and asymmetric transit. The astronomers derived a solution with two 15 Jupiter mass planets orbiting each other every 11 days and orbiting the star every 3.8 years. This solution would also be about as likely as the ringed planet solution. However, solutions with a triple system like this have to be fine-tuned and require specific configurations to be made feasible. This makes the triple system solution less likely, as it is more complex and requires specific parameters. Also, it's very possible that the entire signal is just a false positive. Many signals have turned out to be false positives in the past, especially long period signals. The problem with confirming what KOI 8007.02 actually is, is that it has only transited its star once. Obviously, the existence of a ring system would be much more credible if anomalies, signs of rings, were repeatedly observed in a planet's transit. A follow-up study of the transit is needed to confirm its nature, focusing on the edges of the transit, where signs of rings would be most prominent. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more space content.